it is not surprising for me that uh, the people in the far eastern country, like Japan, are interesting at the happening in the Middle East. Because the happening there is uh, so much important nowadays and for the prospects uh, of the world developments. Uh, in the 90s, Russia changed their goals in the Middle East and their approaches, uh, trying to cooperate, as I said, with the United States. Uh, Russia started uh, even to try positioning itself as an entrusted state uh, between the rivaling uh, and confronting uh, uh, countries uh, in the region, not uh, as a mediator, but uh, as an entrusted state, uh, entrusted state uh, even between the Saudi Arabia and Iran. At the same time, we cooperated, we as Russia, cooperated with Israel. The events related to the Arab Spring are being perceived in Moscow cautiously, as well as in the United States. Uh, the reason is one. These events uh, might lead to some sensitive changes uh, of the political reality in the region. But the Russia's caution is also explained by one special thing. Kremlin concern uh, by the Kremlin concern that such a popular revolt in the authoritarian Arab countries might turn, turn uh, to be uh, contagious and uh, sweep on Russia itself. Uh, those events are perceived in Russia rather as a kind of orange revolutions. I prefer uh, to dub the Middle East events as the revolutions of three no. Three no. What does it mean? No to a national leader. Contrary is yes uh, to an elected president. No to the ruling party. Yes to a party of the voting majority. No to the censorship of media. I would also make a special notice that the case of Bahrain should be regarded as a special case. This is a case of a mixed political-religious protest. Namely, democratic slogans there are to serve mostly as a cover for political goals of the Shiite militants. There are evidences that those Shiite groups are controlled and directed by Tehran, by Iran. With regard to Israel, uh, the degree uh, of threats uh, for Israel uh, is not so high. Uh, Syria seems to become more and more the driving force of eventual regional changes, becoming the focus of the global rivalry between uh, Sunnis, Saudis and Shiites, as well as between the West, USA, Europe and the East, uh, I mean Russia and China. Thank you for, for the time. My task is to speak, as you can see uh, on the screen. So it's about Russian perspectives uh, of the development in the Arab world. It's Russian controversial perspective. Uh, I ask the question, uh, to which extent uh, the development there is important for Russian foreign policy? This all uh, uh, represents a long list of Russian foreign priorities in different sense of this world, and we don't see, we don't see Middle East here. Uh, we should also add to this one a very old they think Russia is no longer the Soviet Union. In the Soviet times, uh, it was clear that for the Soviet Union, it was very important uh, uh, to, uh, to perceive the international development in the context of the bi bipolar world. So, the conclusion which I'm making from this, that this assumption, assumption about low priority was probably not very adequate. It's not a low priority issue. It's an issue uh, to which Russia's foreign policy really devote uh, rather considerable attention. There are uh, problems related to terrorism and extremism. Uh, first of all, with respect to Afghanistan, Arab-Israeli conflict, there is the issue of state building. State building, especially with respect to Iraq, with respect to Afghanistan, with respect to uh, the whole range of issues uh, concerning Palestinian national autonomy, attempts to build something uh, around Palestine. There is also the issue of weapons of mass destruction. First of all, because of Iran. The basic problem which resulted in this real explosion uh, in the uh, Arab world uh, recently during the last, well, let's say half a year, a little bit more than half a year, is the question of legitimacy of the political regime. Uh, when we are trying to understand Russia's policy and Russia's understanding uh, uh, of the development in the Middle East and North Africa, though the thesis is the following. Russia is basically a status quo power. And this is important. 
This is important. We have to understand this when we are analyzing uh, the situation uh, uh, in the uh, Middle East and Russia's uh, perspective with respect to this whole area, especially if we speak about the arms sale arms contracts, contracts concerning the uh, weapons, uh, ammunition and other things. Uh, this in itself is a big issue. This in, fel- uh, in itself is a big issue. I think that this uh, has to be specifically uh, mentioned. If you take uh, some of the major counterparts uh, in the, uh, this uh, area, so Syria, Libya, Algeria, uh, they are among the biggest buyers of Russian weapons. We can see very clearly Uh, uh, on uh, what is happening uh, in the Middle East and North Africa, that non-democracies are doomed to collapse. We should not say that uh, it is impossible to change authoritarian regime. No, North Africa and Middle East, they have shown us that it is possible, that mass mobilization of people is possible, and they are able uh, to overthrow authoritarian regime, to change the political regime. So this is the main argument for the liberal opposition. Mass actions, massive actions, spontaneous or organized massive actions, it is the most serious danger that the society could face. The most serious danger. And the society, the government, they have to prevent this by any means, by violence, by using force, by using military uh, units uh, in order to prevent uh, this kind of destabilization. Ukraine, the Orange Revolution uh, in the year 2004 and later, according to this argument, it was a kind of a prolegomena uh, of the Arab Spring in different contexts with different consequences, but anyhow, it was a mass movement which, uh, which uh, had very serious implications for the domestic development. And another issue which was discussed there is, uh, it is a problem of information security, the role of uh, security, the role of the ability to control the cyberspace, uh, again in the context of all these illusions about the role of Twitter, Facebook and so on uh, in the, uh, in the uh, Arab world. The Arab case was not an exception uh, for all this uh, element. Uh, uh, so this turmoil in the Arab world, these changes, uh, these uh, big events, they are presented as promoted by the United States, organized by the United States, promoted by the United States, or by the Western general, or by Israel. Uh, and the goal is to control oil reserves uh, in the area. Some would say that this is already the beginning of the Third World War. The Third World War has already started, and this is a war about resources. Russia did not vote for the United Nations Security Council resolution. It did not vote against the resolution. Uh, so it did not stand in a position uh, to the majority uh, of the uh, members of the International uh, of the Security Council. It preferred not to become an obstacle uh, to the uh, ability of the Security Council to operate. Russia was not alone uh, in taking this position. It's another argument. China also refrained. And uh, also, I think that what was important, it was a signal, a signal addressed to the West. We can operate together. And Russia's vote, as we know, uh, actually provoked a big domestic scandal. Russia gave a green line to the interference. But also we have to keep in mind something very important. Uh, It's about invested interests, uh, by supporting uh, Uh, sanctions against Libya, Russia could lose uh, 4 billion US dollars. Russia was trying uh, to promote reconciliation in Libya. So, my conclusion, there are two foreign policies in Russia. And speaking about the future, that this could be uh, two different strategies. There are two perceptions. We are speaking about Vladimir Putin and we are speaking about Dmitry Medvedev. Putin is more assertive, more energetic, more offensive-oriented political leader, whereas with respect to Dmitry Medvedev, it's more liberal, more cooperative-oriented, uh, more pro-Western. Uh, there are one a very uh, authoritative and prestigious and well-known center Uh, operating in Russia for making polls uh, uh, among people as uh, they ask the question which of these two uh, policy line as uh, the Russian public public would be ready to support as uh, the results were the following uh, this first line uh, got the support of 53 percent of those uh, who participated in the polls and another line had a uh, 13 percent thank you